Vinyl community, this is Tommy in North Carolina, and happy Record Store Day Black Friday to all of you. I hope that you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, those of you uh, here in the States that celebrate Thanksgiving. I uh, hope that you had a good one, and uh, today is the day for Black Friday. I'm after three things today, and I am headed to a mystery location. This is going to be my first time. Um, not going to my usual haunts for record store day. Uh, I'm actually going to a completely new place. Uh, there's a few stores on Slate today. And like I said, all new to me, uh, places I've never been. So I hope you guys are safe out there. Uh, by the time you're watching this, record store day will have come and gone. So I hope that you all got what you were after. And um, I'll just be checking in. So, uh, you know... I, I know that you're not going anywhere, and by the next time you see this face, I'll be in a different place. So uh, Okay, so I have um, made it back into the lair and with my titles, and I shot footage yesterday uh, at different places that I went, but in the interest of sort of protecting um, identities of people, you know, some people don't want to be on a YouTube channel, and I don't go around getting waiver signed, and I know it's disappointing for some of you because you want to see the stores and all that, and uh, and I try to get that action um, as it happens, but then I realize, you know, there's probably people that, that I catch on the camera that may not want to be seen on YouTube, um, so not that I have like these millions of people that are watching or whatever, but just in the interest of that, I opted not to include any of my action footage. Uh, maybe in the future I'll do some of that. Uh, but it's just so busy and there's so many people and so many faces. It's just hard. And so just to, as a personal choice, I'm not including that. I know that's disappointing. But I am going to show you guys what I got, uh, which is the most important thing. And that's what you're all here to see anyway. Uh, so here's the big thing about Record Store Day. Um, and some of you... I'm not going to get into the politics or the sham of it or anything like that, uh, or the crowds. But for those of you that did not get what you were after and did not, uh, you know, were kind of bummed out or your store didn't have it or it was gone by the time you got there, um, whatever the case may be, uh, any reason you may not have gotten a title, uh, there's a couple of places you can go and probably more than that. But And I'm not getting paid by these people and I'm not getting free stuff. Hey, if you guys are watching this and you want to send me free stuff, feel free. I'll give you my address. But uh, Plaid Room Records, uh, is uh, a, they have an online outlet, uh, and they're selling their leftover Record Store Day stock. Uh, also, uh, and they, you can get it now. You can go and see what they have left. But uh, Monday morning, the Monday morning following Record Store Day, both Black Friday and the April event, Bull Moose Records, uh, they have a lot of Record Store Day titles, and they do not sell them for higher than, than what they sold them for on the day uh, that they went on sale. And so those are both really great places to get any titles you may have missed out on. And I highly recommend that. And just if I'm going to make any kind of political statement in this video, it's that I absolutely uh, hate uh, price gouging and particularly the eBay flippers, the people that go into the Record Store Day stores, snatch up all the titles uh, away from really who I feel like are deserving fans. Um, and then they turn around and sell them on eBay for, you know, four times the amount. Uh, I, I do not support that practice. I, I don't like it. I know it's capitalism. It's the American way. And I know sometimes if you really want a title that you didn't get, that it's the only option. But I highly recommend Plaid Room and Bull Moose as two places to go to get Record Store Day titles uh, that you may have missed out on. I mean, I realize not everybody's going to get up at, you know, in the middle of the night and go wait in line for three or four hours. And I get it. I respect that. And that's fine. Uh, but then also on the other side of that, you know, don't show up at your record store at three o'clock in the afternoon and, and be bummed out because you missed out on a title that they only made, you know, 10 copies of. I mean, it just, it's, it's the logistics of it. And I get it. Uh, the early bird gets the worm, all that, you know, whatever. If you're a flipper and you're watching this and you want to make your case, feel free. I just, I just, I say thumbs down to that. Uh, I don't like it. So that's just my little statement there. 
Uh, so I'm going to share that with you guys. I was after three titles, as I said. I got all three right off the bat, so home run. Uh, and I'll share those with you. Um, I did spend the day with another VC member uh, who's a great friend and thankful for that friendship and had a great time because we gave our wives the day off while we record shopped, which was really cool. And uh, the big thing is I went to some stores that I had never been to in my life. And so that regard, uh, it was quite interesting. Uh, so first I'm going to show you the couple of things that I picked up that weren't uh, record store day related. They were just uh, some titles that I picked up. And let me share those with you guys real quick. The first thing was this Jack White 45 for Ice Station Zebra. This is the newest or the latest single off of the Boarding House Reach album that he put out uh, earlier this year. And this was the last single that I didn't have. So I've got all of the Jack White 45s uh, in my collection. So, uh, Ice Station Zebra, the other side, the B side, is uh, Corporation. Um, so, nothing really new under the sun, but as a collector, kind of a, kind of a big thing. Another one that I was really excited to get was an album that I did not have a copy of, and this is in really nice shape. You usually see these uh, with lots of ring wear, and the jackets are pretty, pretty bad. This is the Beach Boys Surf's Up which is a fantastic album uh, from the early 70s. Uh, and it features some really, really great early 70s Beach Boys songs like Long Promised Road, uh, sung by Carl Wilson. Um, Disney Girls, which is the sort of uh, schmaltzy uh, Bruce Johnston song. Uh, Phil Flows, which I believe was used in the closing credits of Almost Famous, the uh, Cameron Crowe movie. Uh, the absolutely terrible, to be such a decent album... I'm going to say this, Student Demonstration Time uh, by uh, with Mike Love. Just, uh, it's awful. I think it's a terrible track. Um, just not a fan of it at all. Um, but, you know, to each his own, I just think it's awful. Um, there it is on the Brother uh, Reprise label, which is cool. Take a look at that. It's a beautiful copy. It looks really clean. It's nice. Um... It also had the uh, original insert with it, which is the uh, and also the lyrics and the photos down there at the bottom of the guys. There's Brian. But uh, more specifically, the album closes with the duo of Till I Die and Surf's Up, the outtake from uh, the Smile Sessions. Um, absolutely stunning Brian Wilson compositions uh, and worth the price of admission. Another one that I picked up yesterday uh, was this, the Millennium. Uh, this is a reissue. Um, the Millennium Begin. Uh, this is Kurt Betcher's group. I don't know if you're familiar with Kurt Betcher, but he was um, uh, kind of a, uh, I want to say Brian Wilson light uh producer, writer, arranger, extraordinaire. Didn't quite have the same commercial success as, as Brian. It's kind of a psych pop uh, album uh, on Columbia. Uh, and like I said, this is a 180 gram reissue. I found this at a, at a decent price. And I thought, you know what? I don't have this. It's a fun record. Uh, so I have the Sunday's reissue of this. Uh, and I like it quite a bit. So uh, on CD, the Sunday's reissue. So I, I got it, went ahead and grabbed that. And another one I picked up kind of on a lark. Uh, I don't know what the condition is on it. Is this Turtles, uh, White Whale, Mono, It Ain't Me Babe, uh, the first album by the Turtles. Uh, it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, the condition is questionable. You can see marks and dirt on it. So not the most well cared for album but um i haven't opened or cleaned these guys yet so not sure um what all there is sorry about the blur uh, i've got the, my camera has a terrible uh, autofocus feature and i think it's awful and i can't shut it off and so it's constantly finding something to focus on and i apologize for that so let's get to the Record Store Day titles. Uh, I got three of them. I was three for three. There were only three things I was after. Uh, so let's get started without further ado. The first thing is something I know some of you guys were after. The Popeye Demos by Harry Nilsson. These are the songs that Harry Nilsson wrote for the Popeye movie, the Robin Williams, Shelley Duvall film uh, that came out in 1980. 
these are the songs that he recorded uh, that were eventually used in the movie. Uh, and so, not released before on, on any form. I've got a, a digital copy of these on my hard drive. I don't know if these are the same exact ones or not. But uh, it's basically Harry Nilsson singing the Popeye songs. Um, looking at the, uh, the personnel for the Malta sessions, um, which um, I'm thinking, yeah, there were a few of them recorded at Malta. Um, not sure about some of the dates in March of 1980, uh, but Van Dyke Parks, Klaus Vorman... Uh, Ray Cooper and Doug Dillard uh, are pretty much the standard players on most of the tracks. Some of them are home demos. Um, some of them record, recorded at Gold Star there in Hollywood. Uh, and then there is the song Everybody's Got to Eat, performed by Paul Dooley, who played Wimpy in the movie. Uh, so, really excited to get this. I know some of you guys were after after this one as well. I, I'm a fan of the movie. I'm a fan of these songs. And I'm a fan of Harry Nilsson. So that was a bit of a, a no-brainer for me. The next one I actually did open up because I want to show you guys the vinyl. I got the mono We're Only In It For The Money with Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. Actually credited to the Mothers of Invention. A lot of you noticed the Sgt. Pepper knockoff here. Um, this was uh, mastered uh, by Bernie Grunman. It's a standard gatefold like the regular album. But uh, the big selling point for me was mono. Um, so they used the, um, original analog mono tapes, but for better and for worse, here's the cutout, by the way, a complete knockoff of the, of the Pepper, the Pepper album. But, uh, the big thing on this for some of you that was kind of exciting, uh, was the fact that this was a picture disc. I'm not thrilled with the fact that it's a picture disc because I'm not a fan of picture discs. Um... I mean, they look cool, but I would have preferred it to be just black vinyl. But the thing about the picture disc is that they were, um, there's four different ones, apparently. And uh, so some of you probably got a different one than this one. If you did, if you can post a picture of it, I'd like to see. I'd like to see the four different ones that are out there. So if you managed to get this yesterday, uh, which one did you get? Um... Like I said, I, according to the hype sticker, there's four different ones. That's an outtake of the of the gatefold uh, photo. I've not played it, so I don't know. Um, in the dead wax, it says "Happy 50th." I'm looking at it for the first time, uh, and of course, it's got the BG, the Bernie Grunman. The new Zappa reissues have been done by Bernie Grunman and uh, Chris Bellman, and they sound absolutely awesome. Um, I'm just I'm not a fan of the quality of picture disc. I hope this change my, changes my mind. We'll see. So, finally, the last thing I got. Oh, and I'll I'll show you guys this real quick. Uh, I haven't. It's the it's the hype sticker for We're Only In It for the Money, which I'll keep and put in there. The original mono mix. So you guys can take a look at that. Those that want to see that. And finally, the big big boy that I got that uh, some of you probably were after as well. Something that I did not have on vinyl, uh, so I justified this release, is the uh, 50th anniversary of The Birds' Sweetheart of the Rodeo. We Are Vinyl, which is a Sony legacy. Uh, from what I understand, and I haven't really looked at it in great detail, there, of course, is the hype sticker on it. I'm not a big fan of the packaging because it's just... It's just this, it's all put into this one thing. It's not like a gatefold or anything. It's just kind of like the, the box. Um, but it's four LPs in here. Uh, and from what I understand, this is probably the same as the two CD Legacy Edition that came out about, probably about 15 years ago. Um, the, first, uh, the first record, of course, is the uh, album, the original LP. Uh, the second... Uh, or the second record, uh, side C and D, are additional master takes, which uh, side D actually has um, The Christian Life, You Don't Miss Your Water, and 100 Years From Now with Graham Parsons singing the lead vocal, which the Graham Parsons vocals were supposedly erased. Um, various stories about that, and I won't go into detail about it. 
Um, there is um, a radio spot for Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Uh, the um, side E is the International Submarine Band, which I've got a stereo mono of that, uh, which is Graham Parsons' uh, Lee Hazelwood uh, group. Lee Hazelwood Industries uh, put out the International Submarine Band album. Uh, and so um, that's on side E. Uh, side F, uh, the working demos, outtakes, and rehearsal versions. Uh, so different working takes. Also some Graham Parsons vocals on The Christian Life. And uh, Graham Parsons vocals on the, the last record sides, G and H. Life in Prison, 100 Years From Now, You're Still On My Mind, and a couple of instrumentals. But anyway, this is the uh, sort of big thing that I was after, the Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Like I said, I never had this on vinyl. Um, I've got a few CDs of it, but not any vinyl version. So really glad to get it because I love the birds and I love this album. This is sort of the, the birth of um, country rock or whatever, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but it's definitely uh, rock bands playing country music would be the... Um, the way to go. So that is my uh, record store day uh, finds and really uh, happy with what I had and really glad to spend the day with a, with a friend. Uh, so overall positive, very good and so on and so forth. Now I'll probably if you don't already and you should, uh, here's a plug uh, up in the description box up above there is a link to my other channel Daily Records. I do a different record every single day. I'll probably feature some of these albums for the next couple of days in review. So if you want to get a little more detail about the album specifically, they're short. They're about five minutes long. I try to keep them brief. Uh, so when you're having your morning coffee or about to doze off to sleep or whatever, uh, you can watch them pretty quickly in and out. And um, I'll probably feature these on a couple of upcoming uh, daily records. So stay tuned on that. So go click on that link and subscribe to that channel and uh, watch those videos. Give the old thumbs up if you like this video. I hope you do. Uh, like, subscribe, share, comment. I say it all the time, but I do appreciate it, and I do love interacting with you guys. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. It's TommyBurton75. Uh, if you follow those uh, channels or follow those links or whatever, those, those feeds, uh, I usually show what I'm spending on there. Um, so I hope you all had a great uh, Record Store Day Black Friday. And uh, had a good time and found what you wanted. Again, I gave you earlier where to go if you didn't. Uh, so best of luck. And um, I hope you all have a great holiday. And I'll see you all again very, very soon.